Hey guys, hope you have been doing great. In the previous video, we have seen what a parity code is and what error detection codes are. If you would like, I would recommend you just go back and brush up the concept in the previous video for which I'll leave the link in the description below. So in this video, we are going to look at what this block parity code is for error detection. So let us say instead of transferring one binary word like we did earlier, we are transferring multiple words, let's say a block of binary words. And let us say I am using odd parity. In the first row, I have four ones, so I'll give this a one, so it's five. The second row, I have one, two, three, four, five, so I'll give it a zero. The third row has four, so I'll give this a one. The fourth row has four again, and I will give this a one. So this is called the parity column. Now we are going to repeat the same thing for columns. So since I'm using odd parity, I will just make sure that the number of ones in each column is odd. So five, three, and so if I get three already, so I'll put it to zero. So this is how we build a parity block. The column of parity bits is referred to as parity column and the row of parity bits is referred to as parity row. So your parity block, the parity block that you construct is going to have one more row and one more column of the data block that you want to transfer. For example, the data block that I want to transfer is of the matrix five by six. So the parity block, once I build it, it is going to be of the dimension six by seven. So by now, we know the construction of a parity block. But why? Why do we use it? And how does it work? The obvious reason, of course, is when there are blocks of data that you're transferring, a single parity bit would not be enough to determine an error. Let me just jot down a couple of binary words, which is a block of data that I want to transfer. And like we did before, let's construct the parity column and the parity row. One, zero, zero yeah. And the column to one single one single one which may be zero so this considering there is odd parity this is our parity row and our parity column so the use of a parity block over a singular parity bit is error detection in multiple rows or multiple columns or if an error happens twice in a same row for example, one of the zeros in row 2 came up as 1, then in that specific row, the error would have been detected. But, for example, if in the same row there was a different bit, say a 1 became a 0, in that case, the column would detect the error, but in the row, that parity, it would not have detected the error, because the number of 1s would still remain odd. Also, since we are using a parity row and a parity column, the error would be detected on both ends and hence it is helpful in zeroing down on where the error exactly is. And hence, this system is more reliable. And just a couple of things for you to know, a parity row is also referred to as parity word. Also, this block parity technique is extensively used in magnetic tapes. And regarding this diagram of a magnetic tape, I am just kidding, a magnetic tape looks nowhere close to that. Finally, let's wind up with a couple of exercises. So in the first one, there is some data that is supposed to be stored on a magnetic tape. We are supposed to create the parity row and the parity column for both even and odd parity. Let's begin by building the parity block for odd parity. We have the parity column and the parity row. For the first row, we already have three ones, so we would put a zero so that we have a total number of three ones, which is odd. If one is odd, one is odd, and two, we need three to make it even. And coming to the column side to build the row, we have zero, one, one, and 
one again. So we have finished the construction of a parity block for odd parity. Now let us build the parity block for even parity. We have the parity column and the parity row. In the first row there are three ones and since we want an even number of ones, we will give this a one. Second row even ones, one, one, we already have two, so this will be a zero. Coming to the columns, we'll give it a one, we'll give this a zero, we'll give this one a zero because already two ones, already two ones. So there we go. This is how we build the parity block for an even parity. So this is the last exercise for today, I promise. We have a parity block and the parity used is odd and we have to detect which rows and columns have an error. Looking at the first row, we have three ones, which is odd, so there is no error. The second row has five ones, which is odd, so no error. The third row has two ones. Hmm, this is even. So this is going to give an error. And finally, coming to the last, there is only one one, which is fine. So in the third row, we have an error. Coming to columns, we have three ones, which is good. And then we have three ones, which is good again. Now we have woo, two ones, which is bad. Error. And then again, we have three ones, which is good. And this is how we determine the error when we have built our parity block, depending upon whether it is odd or even. This was pretty much all I had for today. Hope you found this video informative. And if you have an exam coming up, I wish you all the very best. Thank you and have a lovely day.